Chinese tallow, sapium, sabiferum. Chinese tallow has been here for uh, over 200 years now. I think Ben Franklin was the first one that introduced it into this country. This habitat that we're in right now is pretty typical of Chinese tallow. It likes these, these margins of marshy areas. It does really well in wet areas and disturbed sites, and that's kind of what we have right here. These trees behind me have a pretty smooth trunk. Eventually, it'll get a, a thicker bark that'll protect the trees from things like fires and such. The leaves are simple, and they occur alternately along the stem. The edges are entire, which means that there's no serrations or notches along the, along the edge of the leaf. They're broadly ovate, one to two and a half inches wide, with rounded bases, and they come to this point at the end of the leaf, and that's called abruptly acuminate. Tallow trees have a really nice fall color. That's why a lot of people like to plant them. You know, the, the leaves turn out just a brilliant crimson red in the fall. Since Chinese tallow is deciduous in the wintertime, it's not going to have any leaves on the tree. After the leaves turn red, they fall off. Often it will still have fruits hanging from the tree. Flowers are small, yellow, and borne on spikes. Chinese tallow flowers in the spring. The fruit is a small capsule that, when mature, turns brown and splits open to reveal three dull white seeds. The fruits ripen from August to November. These seeds remain attached and give the tree another common name, popcorn tree. If you break off a leaf of a tallow tree, you'll find white milky sap. So that's a really good character. With a large seed, like in the Chinese tallow, the seedlings are going to have fast growth rates. There's a lot of energy stored in those seeds, so when that seed starts to germinate, the seedling will shoot up above the ground pretty quickly. Yeah, getting into these Chinese tallow stands, you really appreciate just the, the, the density at which these plants grow, along with the density of dog fennel, but Chinese tallow just gets in here so thick and it's so hard to walk through these trees. But that's one of the things that makes it invasive and a bad plant.